ladies and gentlemen, recipient of four National Film Awards, Kangana stands as a testament to the power of creativity and determination as India celebrates her achievements and roots for her global endeavors. Please put your hands together for the iconic Kangana Ranaut. Also welcome on stage, our hosts, TV9's Neha Khanna and Krishna Kumar. No, no, one no, we'll take other. turns. <laughs> Neha will begin. Thank you so much for that, Krishna. Ladies and gentlemen, we have in the house, of course, a woman who needs no introduction, one of the finest actors of our time, and clearly amongst the most fearless as well. Uh, Kangana Ranaut, welcome to the News 9 Global Summit. Great Thank to you. have you. Thank you for a very generous and kind introduction, and uh, lovely to be here and uh, looking forward to questions. We have lots of questions for you. If I could just begin by telling you, I personally absolutely loved you in Queen and Tanu Ved's Manu, the movies with which you, in a sense, uh, redefined uh, the female protagonist in Indian cinema. But I want to ask you um, a question, looking at the bigger global picture, since this is a global summit. There is no doubt, Kangana, that there is a lot of talent in this country. You are a shining example of that. Indian content, Indian cinema has gone global. Take, for instance, RRR making it to the Oscars. Yet, you know, if you look at Korean content, you think they've set a very successful template. Parasite winning, uh, you know, the Oscar for best picture. K-dramas are phenomenally popular globally. What, according to you, do we need to do to go global on that scale, in your view? Um, you know, the films that you mentioned, whether it is Satyajit Ray's films, or it is RRR, or it is Slumdog Millionaire, these are the films, like Satyajit Ray said that to be truly global, you have to be truly local. So I, I pretty much believe that, that um, we have to be very authentic. We have to make deeply rooted films um, about our cultures, our beliefs, our struggles, our current conflicts, our, uh, our society. Just genuinely authentic films and material that would resonate with the world is, is what I think. So you're talking about genuinely rooted Indian content. And look at you. You started out with those kind of the kind of films you did in the initial stages, difficult roles that young actresses usually don't take. You had done a Tamil film back then. Now you're back to doing Southern Regional Cinema. You've done two Tamil films uh, in recent times. And, you know, in that sense, you are, this session is called Creativity, World is My Oyster. India is Kangana's oyster, isn't it? She's doing everything True. from truly, Hindi to Tamil. It truly is. You know, this... This country and the people of this country have given me wings and they have given me so much uh, love, you know, in every part of the country. I come from up north and I work in the, in the south. I have done roles about Delhi girl, Haryana girl. I've also done Chansi Kirani from um, central India. You know, I've, I just feel that, uh, you know, this country has given me so much and that's why I feel deeply responsible to give back and I've always been, you know, sort of a, more of a nationalist and that, that image has even taken over my very glorious career as an actor. So that, I do have that awareness that I'm deeply loved and appreciated. Just to add on question just to that, what was it like playing the great Jailalitha? In, in a language that's not your mother tongue. It's, you know, it's a movie, it's, it's a project, so much hard work is required. Difficult role, iconic person, speaking another language. What was it like for Kangana? Um, Jaya Lalita's character, uh, Dr. JJ Lalita's character for me, uh, was very empowering, you know, and uh, for me to even uh, get to know people like uh, MGR or Karunanidhi and the more regional politics and what icons they were like, 
we, growing up, we did see them on the television and that we knew who they were, but to, to get such deeper understandings of their lives and, and you know, very dramatic, rather dramatic and, <laughs> and equally entertaining to play as well, must say, and very empowering as a woman. She is uh, definitely somebody who I look up to. Kangana, you use a very interesting word there, nationalist cinema. You're right. You've come to be associated with that very strongly. You've become synonymous with that. But I'd like to ask you, since you've touched upon this, why uh, did you feel that you identified with this genre of cinema? Uh, do you believe that it got you branded as one belonging to a certain ideology? Did that in any way make life difficult no, for no, you? No. I think uh, we shouldn't overcomplicate it. I think when we come from a certain middle class background or a certain upbringing, which is not westernized, you know, 1%, especially when I started and when I came to Mumbai, I was ridiculed for not speaking English or, you know, coming from a certain background. So the whole thing is that people who used to travel abroad, they had influence of the Western films. What I said about films also, why we don't make deeply regional films is precisely because we, our industry is so, so overshadowed by and so influenced by Western cinema and that's why even for Bharatiya people, right now regional films are appealing more than their own so-called Bollywood or Hindi films. So the same way, uh, when I came in, you know, we are the kind of people who think, you know, being a nationalist is, is you know, we, we are the heroes of the country, but there is a certain section of people who don't identify with being Indians and they don't think it's cool enough and they'd rather be in some other country. So for me, it was a bit, um, you know, a bit, bit of a rude shock that there are people who, who think, uh, um, you know, that being a nationalist or being a Hindi-speaking person, having a Sanatani Sanskar or having... A, a, first of all, it was very shocking for me to understand there are people who don't have it. Because, you know, like... <laughs> not nationalist? No, no, I don't mean like, you know, like a... Not a village bell, but honestly, in Himachal Pradesh, we do not have a lot of diversity. It's a, it's a state with 99.9% .9 of Hindus. You know, so... So, I didn't know that... Uh, like, I, I had a certain upbringing. So the alignment with the uprise of a nationalist uh, sentiment in, in the nation has been uh, um, very natural and, and absolutely um, coincidental. Like, you know, it's not something that has been curated or has been put on, trust me. Okay, that's natural. But what about from acting in the kind of parts that you did way ahead of your age at the time, they kind of passed. You shocked us with the fact that you could turn filmmaker just like that. And then you shocked us with the fact that you could become a film producer just like that. You know, it, this evolution has been stunning to watch, Kangana. Thank you. It never happens like this. There's lots of hard work and lots of struggle that goes behind any a milestone or any barrier that we break. But tell us, how did you... I, was, I did this because it felt like we just watched it and like, okay, Kangana director, Kangana film producer. But tell us that journey, that evolution of Kangana from that actress who's doing these complex parts to doing complex work in cinema. Well, I don't think I'm doing anything different. Um, I'm just trying to catch up with the way our audiences are evolving. You know, they are just rapidly evolving. And... Uh, and honestly, we're just all just trying to catch up with them and uh, engage with them and, you know, just live up to uh, the standards that they have. Well, like you said, they, today they have the options of uh, all the platforms, or world cinema and even YouTube, free entertainment, like genuine influencers, small films, big films, reels too. So we as, uh, I think we have a lot of pressure as people uh, belonging to the entertainment industry. Right now we live in a lot of pressure to, to, uh, to be able to appeal to the audiences. So the response to pressure is that let me make that cinema that they are looking for. Let me myself make it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, I mean, I think no artist ever takes this approach that we can make something that they're looking for. The endeavor always is that, uh, you know, let me, let me do my best. Let me, let me go beyond. I, what I can, you know, that's precisely what I did with Emergency, where I directed, produced, and acted in it. Um, because I think just, it's just such a 
sensational, dramatic um, events that took place in our country, and nobody ever depicted them, and I just felt that it will be very exciting. Someone needed to tell the story, and you did. Kangana, I want to ask you this. I think one of the primary reasons why we say today that the world is an actor's oyster is because of the advent of OTT. It has democratized and revolutionized entertainment in many ways. Do you agree that it's opened up doors for actors like never before? That now you can reach a much wider audience, you can do far meter roles as a woman, Talent matters more here than camps do. Ageism perhaps does not impact women as much now thanks to these platforms as it did earlier in traditional Hindi cinema slash Bollywood. Is that something you would agree with? You are portraying a very rosy picture of OTT. <laughs> Rather Just a question. optimistic. I, I would like to believe that because like I said, I'm in the center of it. And honestly, it is not as rosy as it seems uh, because they did, it, it had a certain upsurge in the beginning of uh, COVID time that everybody felt that this looks very um, promising. And then uh, there was this great fall where I can, with a certain uh, assurance, I can say so that none of them are performing well. They are all running in losses. So basically, whenever a film did uh, a blockbuster business, they had like footfall between two to three crore people. That was the footfall of the theater business. Uh, what they have managed to do is, unlike the Facebooks or the Reels or the YouTubes of the world, which have managed to tap into new audiences and new set of people, they have just divided these people into a very uncertain and, uh, you know, um, compartments. For example, every OTT has like 6 million or 8 million or 10 million. I'm not talking about the ones who have attracted the audiences from sports matches or things like that. I'm just talking about strictly that. So they're, they're not able to cultivate new audiences, which is, I think, a big setback. But instead, they have taken away from the, all of your moderate budget films, like from theaters like English English or Queen or Piku and you know, like today you can't imagine a queen becoming successful uh, in the theaters the way it became because they have just taken away that audience and the satellite market has shattered because those people are also a bit disoriented. And then we run a bigger risk of losing them to, uh, you know, like free entertainment or uh, rather convenient entertainment on YouTube or, um, they have, uh, honestly, because of the genuinity and the authenticity of their entertainment, they have tapped into new audiences. Like my father used to watch TV, but now he's on the YouTube all the time. So is OTT a threat to Bollywood, or do you believe they took, they're, they're converging? I'm not sure, actually. I, I think it'll just kind of break even. It will neither make, it, in my understanding of it, um, because even as we speak today, a big OTT platform, which is running in losses, has been taken over by a business giant. Uh, as we speak, I, I don't know where this is headed, though, because their budgets have slashed uh, by half, and they, they're all running right now in a, kind of a panic mode. So let's see. We should give it a little bit more time. But uh, having said that, theater business is on ventilators for sure. We have these really high budget films that are doing well. But the, the rapid releases that we used to have and, you know, they, that used to run the business of films, that is definitely has uh, disappeared because of OTT. Right. And in that sense, you've started directing and making movies like Mani Karnika, there's more happening. So in that sense, are we seeing Kangana enter into the OTT space and, and redo something that's going wrong with the OTT space? Because as you rightly pointed out, it started out with a lot of optimism, but then so many of OTT series came, they just fell flat on everybody's face. Some big production houses making some duds, one after the other. But so if the world is your oyster and creativity, the world is your oyster, what would you do to make content for OTT that is meant for the world? right here in India. You know, I just feel that uh, the revolutionization of uh, digitization and everybody owning a camera has given 
in, you know, like the power of depiction to so many people, especially the people today sitting in, in Maharashtra. I can see a, ga a person raising a, a cow or milking a cow in, say, a bhilai, or a mountain person grazing goats in, in Manali, or, you know, so that has given me insight into this, precisely what I need from entertainment. It gives me insight, it gives me engagement, it also gives me, um, you know, uh, like a investment of time, and, and that's coming so conveniently to me. I can see it for 10 minutes and switch it off, or I can, you know, like these YouTube small, small videos. I'd, I think in my place, if I'd like to do something, I would like to give um, platform to a lot of these raw talent that we have in the country, and the stories um, that, uh, are uh, you know really authentic and true to it, its you know backdrop. I'm so glad you talk about how uh, under the banner Mani Karnika films you want to give a platform to raw talent because my next question to you is this, uh, Kangana, you are undoubtedly one of the most powerful voices in the film industry. You are an actor, a director, a producer. However. Uh, do you believe that despite the female protagonists having come a long way in our film industries, there are still too few women in positions of power who can call the shots, directors and producers, for instance? It's been a very tough journey for women anyway, you know, um, and I have lasted so far, but uh, not to compare myself with anyone, we, we do have good uh, women directors and producers around, like Zoya Akhtar or Ashwini Ayer and all of that. Um, but we, like you said, it's not the absolute. We don't have enough. Um, and uh, I mean, of course, I think, uh, you know, as uh, women filmmakers will be encouraged and there will be more faith in them, there will be more investment in them, the, the trend will change. Trend will change, but what will change for Kangana from here on? Kangana has won four national awards. Four. There is not too many people who have, you know, that to their, in, and that career in which we have so much more to see of Kangana going forward. What does Kangana look forward to? Creativity-wise, working in this business of creativity-wise, what does she look forward to? What keeps her going now? Look, I mean, as, as an artist, I definitely, I, you know, I, I love to go beyond, uh, beyond I can go. You know, I, that's what I would want to achieve, beyond myself. Um, how, how perfect I can be or how, how glorious my art can be, you know, without the burden of my own um, vanity. Of course, that is the pursuit of every artist. But I also want to be the part of the great shift, the conscious shift that we are having as a nation. I want to be a part of that um, because this time is, will always be remembered you know, in uh, probably the golden letters of history, you know, and I want to be a part of this shift. As an artist, what I did, how I um, maybe, you know, acted as a catalyst or added to it, or how I was a part, or I was at least aware enough to be, um, you know, one of these uh, changes. So for me, I think I, I want to, I, I want my art to have a larger significance than just engagement or entertainment. Kangana, one final question before we wrap this up. The director, of course, is telling us we're out of time. But I have to ask you this question on behalf of everyone in this room because everyone is dying to know. Kangana is talented. Kangana is fearless. Kangana is outspoken. She feels strongly about women's empowerment. Are we likely to see Kangana Ranawat take the political plunge anytime soon? For instance, we have a Lok Sabha election in the country. Just a few months down the road, could we see Kangana Ranawat contesting these elections? Do you want to? Well, <laughs> well, um, honestly, uh, it's you're a very smart woman, and you know it's not my place to announce whether <laughs> I should I should be contesting or not. Um, but um, do you want to? No, I mean it has never kept me away from. Uh, you know, being a really aware person, I've, I've done, I mean, more than anybody can do in any so-called seat or place for the country, you know, I have literally fought 
from my film sets with the political parties. So that doesn't keep me away. I don't have, it doesn't take me a, a seat or a ticket to do what I want to do as an individual for my country. Um, but uh, if, if I want to get into politics, I probably think this is the right time.